Hey everybody, Tim Berkowitz here. Welcome to part one of our gun workshop modeling tutorial. As you know, we're going to work on the highly widespread AKM. The reason why I picked that gun is that it has just the right amount of complexity for the kind of in-depth tutorial I want to be providing. Due to its immense popularity in the world, it's very easy to find a ton of good reference images for it. And least but not last, the contrast with the metal and the wood makes it an excellent case for when we get to the texturing later in this workshop. So the first thing that we want to do is take our two reference images, which are perfectly matching. I overlaid them in Photoshop to make sure that they are definitely the same when we toggle from left over to the right orthographic view. And now what we have to do with those two images is to actually set them up in 3D Max. So in order to do that right, we have to create a plane that matches the dimension of our picture. So for example, we have 2000 pixels width and we have 800 pixels in the height. And since that doesn't really matter here in terms of pixel, we're just going to take one zero off here, which leaves us with a plane that we can then just drag that image onto and it will just perfectly fit on it. Exactly the same format. And now it's just a matter of putting these parameters here at the bottom to zero and drag that image on the x-axis a bit here to the left side. So at the moment we see that plane displayed from both sides and I don't want that. So I'm going over, right click it, object properties and enable backface cull. And that leaves us with an image that now we only see here from that side and not from that. So now I'm going to press shift and drag it on the x-axis so that we have a copy of it here exactly on the same coordinates on the x-axis at least and now we can drag side b on it and in order to display it into the right direction i'm going to go in the element mode and flip it that leaves us with both planes perfectly in place here and we can switch over to a left orthographic view and continue by creating a box here. And the only parameter that matters is to put the width to 88, which is, according to Wikipedia, the width of an AKM. So let's put that here into the center, that box, 0, 0, 0. And now let's just select both of these planes here. First of all, let me put that box here in X-ray mode, Alt-X. And now with both planes selected here in left orthographic view, we can then switch over to our scale mode and just bring it down until it fits exactly that box here. And we can also make that a little bit more precisely with the scaling by right clicking that scale button here on the top. And that brings up that dialog here. So now if we press Alt and drag the mouse over these buttons here, we can then just define very precisely the kind of scale that we want to have until it fits our reference image. And keep in mind that we have two planes selected. So we are both scaling our left orthographic view and the right view. And now we can just delete that box because we don't need it any longer. And that means we have our reference images set up here. Let's switch over to the right orthographic view. And as you can see, it's as simple as that. So now we can always just switch around between left and right orthographic view and just have a look here at all these elements that we're going to build. And in fact, I will then just start with the stock and we're going to work our way from stock over to receiver over to the barrels. And that means it's modeling time. So I want to start with a cylinder here, give it 18 sides, drag it out here, and Y rotation, I'm going to put it to zero so that it's all straight here on the top. 
and now I'm gonna rotate it around and position it to where I want it. Only one height segment is needed here. And now I'm going to chamfer here in the middle and take these verts and drag it all the way down. So basically we split it in half there with the chamfer and now we have already the end of the stock in a very basic form. I'm gonna select these edges, add an edge loop and drag it out a bit. and take these birds and scale them here on the x-axis a bit. Do some more chamfering here. Chamfer that some more. And now I will grab these birds here and also the ones here at the bottom. Switch over to our scale mode and while being in the edge constraint, I'm gonna bring it a bit closer to each other here in the center. And now just push it out a bit more. Around here looks fine. And now with our FDD4 modifier, we can also do some more individual rescaling of that whole element here. Taking these control points here only on the bottom and the top and scale it a bit on the x-axis. And now in the left autographic view I'm gonna take these faces here, delete them and just take all of them now here, the edges, bring them back to where that metal cap is and with shift pressed, I'm going to drag some more geometry out here, all the way to there. And now it's also a matter of positioning it correctly. First of all, I'm just gonna follow this shape here and I will switch over here to the scale mode and also scale it on the y-axis to make it a little more flat there as seen on that reference image. Chamfer that here, make it rounder. And we're just gonna continue with that shape here. Drag it all the way up here where it ends. And on a second thought, let's just take these birds here first. And also on the Z axis, I'm going to squeeze it a bit here. Make it more flat again. And now I just want to take these verts here in particular while being in the edge constraint mode and bring them down more. And these verts here, also gonna flatten them more. Same for these here. And now I'm just going to select that whole edge loop here for these open faces and I will just drag some fresh geometry out, align it horizontally. And I'm just gonna leave it here for now and take these verts here first and drag them up so that we already get that actual stock shape a bit more going. Now it looks a little strange here, so I'm just going to take that edge and drag it back in here so that it has this nice shape to it. And 
one thing that I want to do is take this middle segment here, make a ring selection and add an edge loop there so that we can just go in the top perspective now and delete everything here on the right side. And that enables us to put the symmetry modifier on so that we only have to do the work on one side and we don't have to worry about the other side unless we collapse the symmetry modifier occasionally. And now I'll take the target weld and weld these faces here back together which we dragged out earlier. Gonna collapse these edges here and some more target welding. And I will drag out some more faces here, convert it into a vertex selection and snap it here onto that vert. And if that doesn't work here properly, like it just happens, make sure you're in vertex snap and disable enable axis constraint. So now we're able to actually snap it on there. And I will just drag out some more faces here and do the same thing. Snap it here onto that vert. And I also want to make sure I weld these verts together here. So that we don't have any open geometry there. Gonna take these verts, go into FDD free modifier. And with these control points here at the bottom, I'm gonna follow that shape a bit more. And that edge flow looks a little weird there, so I'm also gonna drag it up here. Collapse the FD modifier. And take these verts here again and bring it up a bit. Just making sure that our edge flow is nice here. And it looks like I didn't weld these verts there, so I'm gonna make sure I weld them so it's only one vert. And I will just continue by taking some of these verts down here. Take the FDD2 modifier and bring them closer to each other. And we're gonna make it look nicer in just a moment. I just want to bring it down at the moment. And now I will go in here and just drag the individual vertexes and make that shape here more curvy. And now I'm just gonna take these edges here and with the FDD free modifier and that control point there on the side. I'm just gonna drag it out a bit, collapse it, and I want to have these edges here really put to zero. I don't know what happened there. They should be perfectly aligned and the X coordinates should all be zero for it. And I'm just gonna get rid of that edge loop that was in the way there. So now we have a pretty nice looking base here for our stock. Since that stock is mostly an organic shape, it's really not the easiest part to begin with. So bear with me, we will finish it eventually and then move on to some more mechanical parts. So I will take all these edges and add an edge loop in the middle and while being in the edge constraint we can perfectly fit it onto that shape here without having to chamfer it. And I will continue here by dragging a few more verts up there and just overall here work on our edge flow. Make it as nice as possible. And now I'm gonna take this face here, 
convert it to a vertex selection and I also want to drag it out while not being in the edge constraint mode because that element pushes actually a little bit out when I look at the reference image and that's also why I had to add that extra edge loop there gonna make that curve there a little bit more sharp at the bottom and I just took everything and gave it one smoothing loop here for the stock so far and that would be a good time to take these edges here and give them a chamfer and that is a bit too destructive here with that word so I'm just gonna deselect that edge and do it again and now I'm just gonna target weld that back down there let's have a look here at that metal cap I'm actually gonna take it all at the FDD free modifier and already refine a bit that curve that we see there on the reference image subtle curve as seen here on the reference and now I'm going to collapse it and actually I'm also going to collapse the symmetry modifier on it and now in the border mode I'm going to select everything and cap it so that gives us geometry in here I'm going to inset it and push it out a bit and now I'll just go here into our left autographic view and connect these vertexes here that we just created here with an inset that don't have any edge connections before so now we make sure that everything here as an edge loop I'm gonna take all these edges in the ring selection and add another edge loop same here so that we can work with our symmetry modifier again if we decide to delete all these faces here on the right side and let me do exactly that I'm just gonna take it and delete it so now we also have the cap at the stock and have just more of our stock ready and let's see what we can do next gonna take these faces here and while being in the FDD mode just take some of these control points and drag it up a bit collapse it again it's what I see on the reference image that's why it may look a little strange but this wood actually pushes out there a bit so I just want to follow that a bit more and make sure that our edge flow looks fine drag these edges out here actually I want to rather have them straight and I'm going to make use of our so-called ribbon now have an edge selection here open the ribbon and under the modeling section I'm gonna hit the flow connect on that thing that adds another edge loop but it will also add a proper curve to it it looks at our shape and makes a curve based on the tangents that it sees there and now I'm just gonna go ahead here and make it more curvy gonna take this face here again and also push it out more 
And back to the vertex selection, I'm just gonna take these birds here and I wanna bring them down a bit overall here. It was a bit too steep there. Make sure the edge flow is okay. And that starts to look quite like the stock that I see there on the reference image. However, I still want to make this a bit more flat here on the top. So I'm just going to scale it on the z-axis. Push that out a bit to the side. And I'm gonna make use here of the flow connect again. Add another edge loop there and it already gives us a bit of a curve. I hope the whole rotation around the object doesn't make you dizzy. It's just important to really see that shape from all angles, make sure that it looks good. And now I'm just gonna continue here with a cylinder. I'm gonna align it here into the center and scale it down. Just gonna work here with the top face or at least half of it and drag it out here. And now Put that to x-ray mode, go back to the stock and go over here to these verts. Make sure we have the right axis, the y-axis. Copy the coordinates and paste them here onto, onto these verts. And now I will just drag some more faces down here. The reason for all that is that I want to cut that hole in there. And for that, I'm basically creating that shape here first. So let me just grab these birds here as well, go into the left view and make it match here with our reference image. And it actually looks a bit too big overall. So what I will do here is just take everything here in the element mode and scale it down a bit. around here looks okay. Take these verts again and copy these Y coordinates so that it perfectly snaps there. And now I'm going over to the top view here and I want to take these verts here and actually drag them in a bit. So let me just take all of them here actually and with the FDD2 modifier, bring it all a little closer into each other here. And now I'm going to take our cut tool and cut along that shape here in combination with our snapping. Snap to vert. So that way we cut that exact shape of that hole in there and we can just delete these faces. Take all these edges and now I'm with shift pressed I'm just gonna drag some geometry down there and now it's time to clean it up a bit here. Don't want to have that edge and this edge we could connect it here with that vert and just get rid of it there in the middle. Just let's see how we can re-triangulate that a bit better. So something like that here seems fine. Target weld. Gonna take these two edges and bridge it. 
and I'm going to cap the rest here and I'm just taking these edges that we have here and drag them out again on the x-axis while pressing shift align them and make sure that we have them here on our zero x coordinates it's gonna target weld here drag some more edges out here to the side put that back to zero here on the top and just target weld that back here so now we have this here and I'm just gonna do the same thing here take these edges and also drag them out align them and put them back to zero and weld them back here together always make sure to weld your verts gonna take these edges also this one here remove them control and backspace and weld this one there and now we have that shape here worked out alternatively we could also have used the boolean operation on it but I just wanted to show another way that I usually prefer of the boolean we're probably gonna have some boolean operations later so you will also get to know the other workflow gonna add another flow connect there and let me just add some support edges here in the middle the reason for that is that we have this element sticking out there on the reference that you can see and I just want to have some edges here in place that will support that when we cut that hole in there which is what we're gonna do next and I'm just gonna make use of the same technique that we just did for the other hole that we cut on the top part just gonna take that cylinder here remove these edges or these verts and make it appear already more like the shape that we want it to be scale it a bit and actually I'm gonna chamfer it as well here to make it rounder put it to zero and let's compare it here with a reference image after we drag some edges out there our faces and take note that I'm actually in the bottom view here not the top view shape that around a bit more and now with our stock selected again I will then just use the cut tool again in combination with snap and snap along that shape here and let's make sure we select the right faces here that we don't need and I will just delete them make a few connections here and I'm gonna collapse the symmetry modifier go into border mode select that hole that we cut there and cap it and now with inset I'm gonna basically extrude some extra edges in there and while being in the local mode here 
let me just isolate it. We can then push these faces a bit in there and I'm just gonna connect it. Make a ring selection and give it just one smoothing group so it looks nicer. Even though for smoothing groups, you don't have to be too concerned at the moment. Later, this will become important for now or low poly modeling process. Don't be too concerned about how your smoothing groups look like. As long as they look okay. I like to assign smoothing groups because it's just a matter of having the right visual feedback. But again, once we get to our very finishing steps, we're going to take care of the smoothing groups for the low poly. And I will continue here by having that plane and I'm going to just chamfer these edges on it. Add some extra edge loops here and drag some fresh faces out of it. Delete these edges, go back here to these verts and also chamfer it. Let's just chamfer it all the way and then weld these verts here. And with backspace, I was just deleting that edge. And that here is what we are working on actually for the case you've been wondering. So again, I'm just preparing that shape first. And now we'll switch over here to our border mode and right click that object. And then here on the left side, it says create shape. Put it to linear. And now we select that shape that we just created or editable spline as it's also called. And under the rendering tab and enable in viewport, we can now adjust the thickness on it. I won't have 12 sides on it. I'm gonna give it five or let's give it six to make it a bit rounder. And now I'm gonna collapse it to editable poly. And I will just give it all one smoothing group here on that thing. Again, so that it just looks already nice gonna take that edge and chamfer it and with that face selection I will then just go into the extrude and extrude that ring out there that element and that looks a little bit too low poly for my taste so what I'm gonna do is take these edges here, same as here on that side, and I will go back here to the ribbon and give it a flow connect to make it a bit rounder. Gonna take these top two faces, go into extrude, put the extrude amount back to zero and push out some fresh geometry. so that it's perfectly straight. And now we just have to rotate it and match it here with our reference image. And again, something messed up there here with the smoothing groups. So now it looks nice. Back to the stock here. I will just take these edges and give them another chamfer so that it looks less low poly there. But let's not forget to add another edge loop there in the middle so that we can use the symmetry modifier again. And as a next thing, I want to be working on these details here already for the stock. 
So we'll create a cylinder. Make sure it has no rotation on the y-axis and put it over here to zero. And I'm gonna take that front face of the cylinder, invert the selection, delete everything else so that we are only left here with that face. And I will then give it an inset here and push it out a bit. Gonna make a edge selection here in the middle, add an edge and chamfer it. And now we'll just take these faces, delete them, take the first edge here on the top and on the bottom and give it a bridge. And I'll do the same thing here for these two edges, also bridge it and then just switch back over to the border mode and drag out some geometry here which basically gives us the shape of our screw. Just gonna get rid of these edges that we don't need and connect them properly here. And the same thing here at the bottom. Just gonna take these faces and give them individual smoothing groups. And now we'll detach that face here in the back, switch over to border mode, select the edges on it and go into our scale and while pressing shift we can drag some more edges out there on it. And now we can just flip it, make sure you flipped it so that it actually faces in our direction and we can just drag it here on the z-axis so that we get that effect here. And that piece here in the back will actually be a so-called floater element that supports our high poly. That is not an actual element that we will see in our low poly, unlike that screw that we have here in the front of it. So I will just give it smoothing groups here and take that element, add the chamfer modifier to it, go over to unsmooth edges, and bring the amount down. Bit up again and now we'll add the turbo smooth on top of it and that's basically here the high poly workflow later already as an example here on that screw just so that later we don't have to worry about that element and we already take care of it now. Just gonna position it a bit more here. And now I will just copy that whole element down because we also have a screw down there. Give it a bit of a shift so that it doesn't look identical. And I wanna take that piece that we just created here for the back, that floater element. Make sure it has the right smoothing group there and I'm going to scale it up. Make sure I'm in the right scale mode. And now we're gonna just position it where it's supposed to be, which is not exactly in the center. So I'm gonna leave it somewhere around here. And also let me just switch everything here to black edges and give it a gray material. So now we have black wireframe and gray material, which I prefer to look at when I work. Gonna take these and position them better. Scale it up a bit more. And give it a subtle rotation. It's going to be important for later when we bake our normal map. And the same thing here with these two, I'm going to rotate it a bit.
and actually I'm gonna take these faces here and flatten them so that they are aligned on the vertical axis actually it's the horizontal axis sorry and now I will just push them in there a bit more give it a bit of a scale so that it looks fine and now I'm going to take that screw that we have here and I also want to copy it over here we don't need to have that floater element with it so I'm just gonna take it and position it where we want it to be for the case you wonder why we have the turbo smooth already on top of it it's just like I said better to already have this as a finished high poly piece we can just remove the modifiers on that screw and it's automatically back to low poly so for now we can just save us the work for later by already having the chamfer and the turbo smooth on these pieces and that's exactly what we're doing here let me switch over here to the local rotation and also give it a bit of a twist and let us jump back here to the front of the stock select those faces and bring them up a bit more so that it's not so perfectly round there if you look at the reference image you see that there's quite the hard edge there where it connects with the receiver and for that we're going to use our FDD2 modifier take that control point right there and just bring it up a bit same here on that one bit more and then we're just going to collapse it and just individually take one point after the other and make sure that our edge flow is nice and now we just have to delete the right side again here since we only applied that change here to the left side and now we're just going to use our symmetry modifier again and make sure that we have it on both sides I'm gonna detach this element here as a clone and that will be the base for that metal element that's actually in there that connects the stock with the receiver I'm gonna use inset here on it having all these faces selected and just inset it so that we can get that shape on the sides already worked out next I'm just gonna delete these faces here and bring those to that line there right to the edge and now with these faces selected we can make use of our extrusion here put it to around one and then just take these edges and bring them down again push it a bit to the side there to the front actually and then again we can take these faces here extrude them out to the front and then do the same thing here on those sides extrude actually let me also grab that face here so we do it on both sides and now we just extrude it out to the side and all that's left to do is take the top edges on it here and there and then we're just gonna chamfer it let's give it another chamfer there on the top to make it rounder and actually let's take that one there as well so now we have the perfect round shape there for that element and let me select this edge here or first of all let's delete these faces here at the bottom which we don't need back to that edge 
um, actually there's this vert there. I'm just gonna delete it so that we really have the whole edge selected. And then with shift, I'm just gonna drag some fresh geometry out. And then with target weld, we can connect these vertexes here. And that is pretty much it. I'm just gonna bring that up here on the Z axis. A little bit more up there and now we just have to take that screw element here again. I'm gonna take it without the floater, just the screw. And then put it there in the at the start of that metal element here into that round shape as seen on the reference image. Scale it up a bit. And now we have that element all done here. Actually, let's just bring it up a bit more here. And next, I want to be doing some work on the receiver. And as seen here on that reference image, the width for it is 3.175 centimeters. And that's really the most important one that matters here for us, so that the overall width of our AK doesn't look weird or off. So I'm going to have it here to 3.175 for the height which in our view here actually stands for the width when you look at the reference image. And now I'm just gonna take these words here on that box and bring it up a bit. Make sure it's actually centered here at zero. And I'm gonna bring it up a bit more here. And I already want to take some of these edges here on the side and give them a chamfer. Actually a double chamfer, let's be generous. And as a next thing, I'm going to create another box here. And I want to create a shape that fits the magazine in it. So first of all, I'm going to put these coordinates here or these parameters to the same that we have on that reference image, that blueprint image. And I'm just going to continue by making a copy of that box here, snap it back into place so it's really overlaying. And now I will change the parameters of the copied box and also snap it back here to the front. Continue changing the parameters. It's based on what I've seen there on the blueprint. And now we have this small box indicating where it tapers in on that magazine hole on the receiver. Gonna go back here to the main box and add some edge loops to it. And now I'll take the verts here on the front top and bottom, go into the scale mode and do exactly that here. Next I'm going to take these faces, invert the selection and just delete it so we're only left here with really that front face. And now I'll switch over to vertex mode, make a selection for only the corners and give it a good chamfer here, double chamfer. Make it nice and round. And also an extra chamfer here.
bring it in a bit. And now we have exactly this kind of shape here that we want. And also with pretty accurate parameters on it. Gonna rotate it 90 degree here. And position it to where we want it. Actually, it needs to be flipped around 90 degree. Gonna make another copy for it. Maybe we can need it later for when we model the actual magazine. And also let me put it to zero here. So now we have it perfectly centered on top of our or under our receiver. And I will just go in border mode and take it all the way up here, get some fresh geo out of it. Gonna delete the right side of the receiver so that we only have to do the work once or I guess the left side when you look at it from here. And now just add some extra edge loops here, bring them up while being in the edge constraint. And now we do what we did earlier already, just cut along that shape that we created. And once we are done with that, we can then just jump over here to our left orthographic view again and go over to face mode, select that shape and delete it from the receiver. And let me take that shape that we used here. I'm just gonna leave this one because we already have it in position at zero. We may want to use that for the magazine. Let me put the symmetry modifier back onto the receiver. And let me drag the second reference image here onto our plane that has the magazine on it. You can find it in the essentials folder. And let me also change the material color here back to gray. So now I'm already making use of that shape that we just used to cut that hole in the receiver and I will use it as a base for our magazine. Just dragging some fresh geo out of it. And let me zoom out here, select these verts, go over to scale and give it a scale on the X axis so that it's a bit more squeezed there on the corners. And let's also bring it a bit in here. Gonna add another edge loop here. And I want to apply material here with lesser opacity so that we see more what's going on on the other side. Let's put it to 20. Let's give it another squeeze here. It's actually rather tight there on the corners. Let me grab that FDD4 modifier and take it here in the inner control points and drag it out so that we have this curve more in place there. Going to delete that top face. And I will continue by making some preparations here for the back part of the magazine where we have that element coming out of it. Let's scale it in a bit, or actually quite a bit and convert these edges to faces and extrude it out.
position it a bit better. And also I'm gonna delete these top faces on it. Let me just put the normal material back on there. And also gonna get rid of this edge loop there. So as a next thing, I am going to work on that curve. And for that, we want to have at least 16 edges here. Or let's be generous, let's give it 20 to make it really nice and curved. I'm gonna use the bend modifier. Go over to Y axis and give it a bit of an angle here. And before I commit to that, let me just make sure that everything is fine here on our actual shape because there's no changing it later or at least very hard to change later. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to collapse that. And actually, let me undo it. I'm still not exactly happy here with that. So I'm gonna drag it in a bit more. And now I will import our caliber. 7.62 caliber you will find it in the essential folder it's just a reference so that we really know the shape of our magazine here and let me just reposition that again here based on that caliber so now I'm actually happy with it and I collapse it and let me already delete these faces here and work a bit on the upper shape here of the magazine. So first of all, I'm gonna drag some fresh geo out here, add another edge loop, or not really a loop, just an edge. And here we wanna add an edge loop. So now I'm just gonna make that curve look a bit better and get rid of that face selection here and the same applies to here I'm gonna add an edge loop and work on that curve here so I'm gonna bring it up a bit take these faces here and while being in the front perspective, I'm going to apply the FDD modifier, but first I just want to delete the right half of it so that we only have to do the work here on that side. So let me just take these faces again, convert it to a vertex selection, go over here to FDD free modifier, and take the upper control points and drag it over here to our center. And I'm going to collapse that. Put the symmetry modifier back on. And let's have a look at that piece here at the back. That's what I'll be wanna working on next. And for that, I will add another edge connection here through these edges. And I'm going to take these edges here as well, all the way here to the upper part of the magazine and drag some fresh geo out, put it to zero. Make sure it's perfectly aligned. And the same here. Let's weld these two words. And let's make a few more edges here 
First of all, this one looks a little chaotic at the moment, but it will become more evident what we're up to once we first of all delete these faces and we still need to do some more work here on the geo before we can do some extrusion on it. Kind of get rid of that edge here, clean it up a bit. And I want to add another edge loop here. Let's make sure it's perfectly aligned vertically. I'm gonna snap it here to that vert. So now we finally have that face selection here that we can then extrude out. We don't need those faces, so I'm gonna delete them. And let's compare it here with our reference. It sticks out a bit too much, so I'm just gonna bring it in. And let's select that top vert here, go into the edge constraint and drag it over here to the right side. So you very often see me jumping between edge constraint and no edge constraint. That's definitely an important one that very often is useful here for our modeling. So I'm gonna extrude some more faces out here and make sure that we have the proper shape that we can see there on the background reference image. Gonna give that a bit of a chamfer here as well. Clean it up a bit. And now we have this annoying element here that we want to weld. So let's drag, first of all, some more geo out here, snap it and weld it. And I'm going to add another edge here in the middle of that. Bring it over here, delete the face on it and just weld that element back onto that. So now we have it as one element. And I'm going to also reconnect it here and just get rid of that edge loop that we don't need. Same goes for that, don't need that anymore. And let's have a look again here at that front element where it does that curve. And I did cut a bit too much off there. So what I will do is take these verts, align them horizontally and snap them back here onto the top part, weld it together. And now I will just cut another edge over here, switch over to face mode and delete it and do a bit of chamfering here to get that curve back. Let's curve it a bit more and target weld that back down there. And let me take the whole magazine and already position it over here to the receiver. And I will do that as an instance so that we can continue working here in the free mode basically and I will add an edge here straighten it while being in the edge constraint and I'm gonna snap it down here to that vert weld it as you can see here on our instance it also already happened that edge And let me just put the symmetry also back on here. And let's have a look at it. It looks like it's overlapping a little bit there. So what I'm gonna do is go back here to editable poly under our symmetry modifier, put a FDD2 modifier on it and take the control points on the side and bring it in a bit. 
and that helps us to get that shape actually fit there. Let me make a ring selection here for all these bits. Take these verts and what I want to do with it is also apply FDD2 modifier and just this time we can take all the control points and bring it in a bit. Collapse 2. Symmetry modifier, usually it's a good idea to put it to 0.01 as a threshold or else it may sometimes weld some words together that we don't want. So next I'm going to attend to that top piece, border mode. And then with the scale tool we can just press shift and drag some fresh geo into there. Going to convert it to a vertex selection and scale it a bit here on the Y. Bring it in a bit more. And now I'm just going to drag some more edges down here. We don't really need to fill the whole magazine with it because you will never see it. So I'm going to have it here and cap it. And now I'm going to connect these two verts so that we can still use our symmetry modifier again. And this requires a bit of cleaning up here. There's too many edges. So let's get to that. But first I'm also going to delete the right side. So we only have to do the work once. And now I'm just going to clean that up here. Target weld. Get rid of that edge here. And I'm just going to get rid of that edge loop there. Don't need it. Some more target welding. And these are a few too many edges, so I'm just going to press backspace on it to just delete the edges without the verts. And these ones here, I'm going to completely delete. Control and backspace. Connect. And let's have a look again. And let's take that caliber here and put it out of the way for a moment because I want to perform some cutting here. Go over to the cut tool and follow that edge that we see there on the reference image. And now it's time to take these faces and extrude them out. And it looks like I collapsed the geometry that we currently work on, so the instancing didn't work anymore here. So I'm just gonna put it there again, see if it still looks good. And it looks fine. Let's just go back here to that curve once more. Gonna do some more cutting here. And now I'm just going to take these faces because they also pop out. So I'm going to collapse our symmetry modifier for that. And now I will go over here to extrude. Put it to somewhere around 1 and also put it to local normal so that it really opens up to all the sides. 
Let's have a look around here on the instance. And I'm just going to deselect the words that we have here on the side. That leaves us with just the ones here on the top. And now I'm just gonna drag them out even more. And while we're at it, let's cap that here at the bottom. Connect it so that we have it for our symmetry modifier. So as a next thing, I wanna be working on these knobs or whatever they are called that they are sticking out there for the grip on the magazine. And I will just add a few more edge loops here in between the ones that we already have for that. Gonna take these edges here as well. And actually before I do anything else, let me just get rid of the right side again so that we don't do the work twice. And now I'm just gonna make another edge connection here in the middle of them. Chamfer them so that we get two of them basically. And now I'm just gonna position it into place. Same over here, I wanna add another edge loop. Or a section of edges. And now we'll just take these individual edges here and extrude them. So that way we can add that detail here to our magazine. And in order to make it not so super low poly looking, I'm just gonna take these edges again and give it a chamfer. Which now requires us to clean it up a bit that produce quite some extroverts. Gonna get rid here of that edge loop. And I'm just gonna collapse or delete these edges here and reconnect them. So that we save a few polys. Gonna Delete that as well here. And reconnect it. same down here. Let's just get rid of it. And I keep collapsing those polys on our symmetry modifier, which I shouldn't actually. So I'm just gonna do the same thing again here. Just get rid of it and apply our symmetry modifier back on for as long as we are working on it. It just happens when you are working on that stuff that often you perform the convert to editable poly and then the symmetry modifier just needs to reapply it. So it's just the way it is. Just gonna add one smoothing group here to these pieces. Or actually I'm gonna break it up here in the, in the middle segment. Some more connections here.
and now we want to do the same thing here on the vertical side of the magazine. So I'm going to take that edge ring here all the way up and go into connect. Let's add four edges to it. I'm going to deselect the top row and the bottom row of these edge loops and now I'm just going to also do the same action here, extrude it out. Just take the edge selection that we have active here on that thing and also give it a chamfer. And the same thing here, only that we want to extrude it into the inside. It goes in there when I look at the reference image. So same extrusion width, but inside. And also some chamfering. And I'm just gonna get rid of these edges here and also clean it up. Connect them properly. Actually, I'm gonna open that up here again so that we have some more verts where we can connect it to. And that's already shaping up pretty nicely here on magazine. Gonna take that word here and do some connection on it. I just want to also make sure that this is all one smoothing group and for that I just want to have the right edges selected here and I'm gonna perform a ring selection on it, convert it to faces and only have it active here on the middle segments and now we can grow that selection and assign one smoothing group to it. And somehow it broke it here again. It seems to be an issue with 3D Max 2016 that it breaks smoothing groups. It's really annoying. I never had it with older versions. So if you see me reapplying some smoothing groups from time to time, that's the problem. And also I want to already add these floater elements here at the bottom of the magazine. So we'll just create a cylinder and do a similar thing that we did to the back of our stock earlier. Just gonna invert that selection and be only left with these pieces here. Scale it a bit. and push another edge segment out there. And since we have two of these pieces, I'm just gonna make use of that thing that we already have here. Connect these verts and chamfer them in the middle and drag out the upper half. Scale it down a bit. And 
now it's just a matter of positioning it correctly here. Make sure it really fits there, this piece here. And let's already make it a high poly floater. So same as earlier, I'm gonna put it to unsmooth edges control our chamfer amount and add a turbo smooth on top. And now we can just copy these modifiers and paste them here onto that object. And also I want it to be gray with some black edges. And let's have a look again at the top part of the magazine. Gonna delete that instance here. Just wanna be focusing on finishing that actual magazine and then we can just put it where it belongs. So let's just take that caliber here. And I'm gonna have the magazine here in isolation mode and I actually want to add some proper depth here to it. So we'll add that extra edge, align it horizontally while being in edge constraint mode and bring it up here, connect it properly and now we can just take that face together with these, this one over there and just drag it in there so that we have an actual curve going on there. might be a nice element to add. Let's say we have like first person view and we have a reload animation. We want that to be visible. Just gonna drag that in here a bit more. And some more cleaning up. And target welding. Same for these, I'm just gonna get rid of it here or collapse them. And that piece, let's just connect it there. And that looks a little strange up here. I'm just gonna get rid of that edge. And these ones as well. I'm just gonna have it like this here. And we actually don't need these two edges. I'm gonna just get rid of them. And same over here. And these ones here are also on a flat surface, so we don't need them. They only add to the poly count. Let's have a look. Let's see what it would look like if it was really stacked here. And it seems to fit pretty well, so quite happy with that. We can now position it to our receiver where it actually belongs. And let me go back to the stock once more. This actually should be more flat. And now that we have our receiver in place, we can go back and make sure that it really lines up there as we see it on the reference image. If 
First of all, I'm going to add another flow connect here to make it a bit curvier there. Gonna align that vertically and connect it. So now it looks a little better here, our stock edge flow. And we just have to make sure that everything lines up here properly to our receiver. So I'm gonna take these verts And also I want to take some here from the top part. Make sure not to select the ones that we cut in that hole there. And now I will just take our FDD modifier, FDD2, and drag it out here at the receiver end. I'm gonna add another FDD3 modifier on top and make a selection for only the bottom parts here and drag it into place. The FDD modifier is really a very powerful tool. Let's just do things like that here, which otherwise would require a lot of manual work to shift these vertexes around manually. So now let's just make sure our edge flow is still good. And also we can add that floater element there, that screw. So we're just going to make use of what we already have. Take that screw from earlier here and copy it over to where we've seen it on the reference. Let's make sure it's centered at zero on the x-axis and rotate it into place. Gonna take these edges and while being in local mode, give it a bit more depth here for that one. And now I'll just assign another smoothing group here into the inner segment so that we have a proper crease there on that element in combination with our chamfer and turbo smooth and maybe we can put it over here seems to be more where it is on the reference and other than that we got a whole lot done already for the first chapter magazine stock and a little bit of the receiver so we will just continue doing that work on the AK in the next chapter and I'll see you there.